So welcome to the module two of our Spring Boot course. Uh, in module one, we learned some basic concepts of the Spring Boot. At least we have now the basic understanding of the Spring Boot, like what what kind of uh, features Spring Boot brings into the picture, how uh, this is supporting our Spring based development, and. At the at the end of the module one, the last in the last lesson of the module one, we created a Spring Boot application, right? And it was just a simple Spring Boot application, but there were a number of things which were happening behind the scene. Uh, so this lesson of our module two is going to get a a little. Uh, uh, the idea is that I'm going to get a a dive into one of the main uh, point into the into the Spring Boot application. And that is the entry point for your Spring Boot application. You just run that line and your you basically all the magic happen and your application starts. Okay. So I'm just as I said, right? Uh, and uh, we were talking about in the lesson one that okay, Spring Boot, there is a main method, and you just run the main method the, the same way you run any of your Java classes, right? Uh, you write a program, Java program, you have a main method, and then that main method is basically the starting point for your uh, your Java code. Right? Spring Boot works on a, the similar kind of uh, the conventions or, or is basically follow the same conventions, right? You have a run method, you have a main method, you execute your main methods, and then everything starts working, right? All the pieces will glue together and uh, you have a, a running application with you. So, if you remember uh, the in our main sorry in our uh, uh, in our main application which was the entry point for us uh, the spring application dot run was the entry point for us the moment this uh, this line of the code executed Sp uh, spring boot does a number of things for us it's a behind the scene but there are a number of different things happening right so we just want to get a deeper dive into it uh, because uh, I believe that this is really, really, uh, really, really important for you to understand those basics before we get a little further onto our, our Spring Boot course. Okay, so let's see what what all things this single line is doing for us. Okay, so the first thing it it's doing internally is doing a class path scan. If you already have an experience or working onto the web application, you know that. We basically create a class path scan where we tell the Spring, okay, uh, Spring, uh, Spring, that hey, this is our base package. Scan all the classes beneath this package, and then uh, based upon the metadata, uh, metadata is nothing but uh, okay. In the Spring applications, you can create the metadata based upon the XML, or you can also use the annotation, right? So it 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 reads those things, and it's basically it's uh, it's basically going to create. The different kind of uh, beans for you. It can be a service bean. It can be uh, the resource. It can be a configuration beans, or it can be a controller. Right. Everything is done for you. In a similar fashion, when you run that, uh, your main method Spring Boot does a class path scan for us, and then it basically reads all the different classes, all the metadata which we are applying on that uh, classes. Read those uh metadata and then creates the things for us for example uh, you have annotated a class as a service so spring understand okay this is a service metadata i'm going to create a bean service bean right so it will do all the things it's going to read it it's going to see okay what are the different dependencies it's going to create a bean for you uh, it's going to uh, kind of init initialize those things so that is the one thing which spring boot does for us when you run that application okay Spring creates the default configuration for us. If you remember, I was talking about it's an opinionated framework. One of the core feature of the Spring Boot is the default configuration setup. Based upon our class path configuration, it takes an opinion. It's 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 take a call saying, hey, you are basically creating a web application. These are the different things you definitely need to start working onto the Spring Boot application. So don't worry to create those uh, things for you. I'm going to give it to you and then I'm also giving you the flexibility where you can customize those configurations. You can override those configurations, right? Let's take a simple example. While if you if you're creating a web application into a Spring Boot, the default application server is Tomcat. 
Spring Boot is automatically going to create an embedded Tomcat server for you. It's automatically going to initialize and run that Tomcat server for you. Let's say you don't like it. You want to run your application on the jetty. Right? All you have to do is to change the configuration into your pom.xml. Now Spring understand you don't need the, you, you are not, uh, you don't want the Tomcat, right? You want the jetty. So it's automatically going to take care of those things for you. Okay. And then uh, up on top of it, you are working or you are creating a web application. You need the dispatcher servlet for sure because that is the one which is a front controller for you. It's going to accept all the incoming requests and then it understand, okay, this request goes to uh, so to the controller one, this request goes to uh, controller two. But if you remember, we haven't written even a single code or telling the Spring Boot, at least in our first example, that which is our dispatcher servlet or what is the configuration for the dispatcher servlet. Everything is being taken care by the Spring Boot. It's going to create that for you. There are a number of different filters which really are handy or there are kind of a a critical part for your application right all those things are being created for you so at the end of the day you haven't written a code but still you have a ready to use web application so that's the beauty of the default configurations right i know okay you and if you if you already have the work i am I'm, I'm assuming that you already working onto the spring right so you know that uh, when application start, it needs to create an application context. If it's a web application, there is a web application context, right? These are kind of a, the core building blocks for your application to work correctly. These things are automatically being taken care for your uh, for your application, and and the other beauty the beauty on top of it is. If it's a web application uh, context, right? Definitely you need a web application context. And that means either you need to indicate to the system uh, or to the Spring Boot application or the Spring Boot application should be smart enough to understand those things and should be smart enough to create a web application context for you. That is another thing which Spring Boot is automatically going to do for you. It's going to scan your class path it's going to scan the configuration. It's going to understand, okay, you are creating a web application. You need a web application context. That creation of the context, making sure that all the right configurations are put into the con web configurations is automatically done for you by Spring Boot. Uh, this is the example which I'm, I'm taking this example on multiple times, right? You definitely, if you're creating a web application, you need an application server. If you're not defining it, Spring Boot is going to use the Tomcat your default uh, application server, right? But it's going to initialize that application server for you. It's going to run that application server for you. And on top of it, your application is going to run on top of it, right? So these are the different things which happens behind the scene uh, when you run that a single line of a code in your applications. Okay, to give you a better picture, what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to run this application. Okay, the reason why I want to do it, I just want to give you an idea that this was a main method and not the run. Uh, okay, my bad. Sorry, I was doing some changes and that uh, it, those are incomplete changes. Okay, so I'm again, I'm running our uh, first application. What do I want you to pay close attention to this uh, console? Okay, there are number of things happening behind the scene. And what I was talking about earlier, before we started uh, this uh, this um, our editor, you can you can see everything is happening onto the console. Okay, let's pay a close attention to them. It basically started a Tomcat and initialized the Tomcat on port eight zero zero. The same thing what I was talking about. It started a web application context, right? It initialized that context. If you see, initialize a Spring embedded web context because it's a web application, it needs that context, right? So it created that one. There is a dispatcher servlet that has been mapped to this uh, URL pattern, right? So that means every request is being intercepted by this one. You, you haven't done any configurations. And there are certain other filters which are really required for your application to work correctly right so these what i was talking about these are the different things which happen behind the scene for you everything is being taken care for you right to just to uh, extend it a little bit 
I think when I started working onto the Spring Boot application, the first question that came to my mind after looking into this line is, what exactly is happening? How the Spring Boot is creating um, the context for you? How does it basically decide that, okay, I need to create a web application context or I need to create a different context, right? What what are the different configuration? How it's how it's determining all those things, right? To give and probably I'm I'm hope I'm I'm assuming that those those are the very basic questions that might be in your mind right now. Okay, so to answer your questions, let's take a deeper look into this run method. Okay, so this is what our run method look like, and what we are doing here is we are creating an configurable application context this is nothing but an extension to the application context okay if you just want to take a look at it if you see the configuration application context extend the application context so in short it's going to have all the characteristics of the application context and few uh, a new one on top of it okay and then uh, there are a number of things happening. I'm not uh, probably this is not the right time to cover all those things because uh, that means it's going to get a little complicated. But what I want you to look into it, it is the create application context. OK, and inside the application context, this is the one I was talking about. Right, Based upon the web application type, what kind of uh, application you are creating, it's going to return the application context if it's a servlet it's a web application it's going to return the web application context if it's a reactive one it's going to return the reactive uh, context okay and for the other application which is more or less the standalone applications uh, the the default application context uh, will be passed back okay and how this value will be determined like what is the web application type uh, if you look into the constructor of our spring application This is our constructor. Okay. There is this line which says deduce from the class path. Look into the class path and then determine what kind of a context I should be creating for the application, right? Just look, check for a couple of different class uh, classes. Based upon those classes, if that class is present into the class path, it is going to be the the standalone context or if the web or the servlet context is uh, present into the class path it is going to be the web context okay so this is uh, this is a static method uh, where it basically uh, it determined what kind of a web application context or what kind of a application context i should be creating i i in the sense that spring boot is creating for you so in short that's what i'm talking about it basically determine if I have for the web uh, web flux, uh, it basically try to determine if they have a dispatcher handler of this reactive one. If yes, it will take a call. If they have a Java X servlet filter or configurable web application context available into the class path, most probably this is going to be the web application. Okay. And uh, I hope that that will give you at least the the, the starting idea of, of uh, how this works entirely. There are other different questions, for example, how the Tomcat server is initialized. Um, how does it determine how, how the customization works? For example, if you if there is a default configuration uh, available from the Spring Boot, how I should be customizing it? Just hold on for those questions. We are going to cover those questions into uh, the other uh, uh, lessons of our this course. Okay. The last thing before uh, we close this uh, this lesson is that this is one way of running your application. The, but Spring Boot also give you an option to customize your app Spring application before you uh, be, before you run or before you execute the run method. So for this one, what you can do is you can create an instance of the spring application i'm going to call it as an application which is going to be new spring application and this needs our main class as an argument okay once you have this hold of the spring application you have a number of different methods where you can 
customize the startup behavior for application for example if you want to change the banner this is the banner i'm talking about right if you want to change this banner you can always set a new sorry you can always set a new banner here okay come on oh what happened okay sorry for that you want to set there some environment configuration environment properties you can always do that you want to set initializer you can always set that okay you want to register any shutdown hook for example if you want to close a couple of things before when the application is shutting down you can have those hook in place okay resource loaders uh, all all those kind of different things right and then at the end of all of these configurations you have to use this application dot run and pass on the command on command line arguments to run your application okay all right so i hope that this will give you at least the, the basic idea of few of the things or the magic that is happening behind the scene while you are creating your spring boot application